Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. My name is Yaqid Zaman. We are going through Mukhtasar um, al-Qudud. About to forget the name of the book there. So I've been doing uh, 89 lessons. And I'm just about to forget the name of the book that we are covering. So it's called uh, Mukhtasar al-Qudud. If you guys are not familiar with my channel, check out my channel. I make all sorts of videos. Videos on uh, topics like Quran, Hadith, Fiqh, Arabic as well. I've got 17 lessons Arabic for those who are interested. Check out details should be in the comments below, inshallah, or the detail, uh, description below. And uh, let's start then. So, Babu Salat al Musafir. Right, so, Musafir, it means a traveler. Right, so someone who travels. Safara, Yusafir, Musafir. Safar is a journey. So, travels, a journey. Ahkam is the rulings. Yatagayyar is to change. Ahkam is a gem of hukum. And then you've got Yaqsid al Insan. Yaqsidu, it means to intend. Or yaqsudu, yaqsidu. Mawdi'an, it means a location. It's from the word wada'a yada'u, your location. Then you got maqsad, or maqsid, which means the place that you're intending. And then you've got masirat thalath ayyam. Masira means a, a journey or a distance of the last three days. Sayr, it means motion or movement as well. It can be movement, motion, uh, walking as well. Mashi is walking. Aqdam is the gem of Qadam, which means feet. Mu'tabar is considered la mu'tabara. And say it in before. Ruba'iya, it means a four unit. A four unit. A ziyada, you should, should know that one. And then you've got. What's in there? Ukhrayan. Ukhrayan is the other two. Ukhrayan is gem of Ukhra. Ukhra, Ukhrayani. Other two. And then you've got. Um, Farak al buyut. That's it. Right, so let's do a little bit of Tarkib then. Some of you guys like the Tarkib. Put in the comments if you enjoy the Tarkib. If you put in the comments if you only come here to watch this because of the Tarkib. I want to see how many of you guys there are. Alright, so Babu so Hada Babu Salatil Musafir Salat Yatagayr Al Ahkam. Ahkam is the fa'il of Yatagayr. And then you got Hua and Yaksina. This is a mistake over here, okay? Um Right, so mistake is supposed to be an yak si da an yak si da an yak si da. Okay, so al insan is a fa'il, maudi'an is location, a full bihi, baina mudaf mudafilay darf, masira tu thalathati, a yamin mudol mudafilay, mashil akdam, la mu'tabar la nafil jints. This we call la nafil jints. Nafi, jins, negating genus. Fardul musafiri, mudaf, mudafilay mubtada. Indana is dharf. Fi kulli salatin, ruba'iyatin. Is the mawsuf sifa. Raka'atani is going to be the khabar. Wala tajuzu ziyadatu. Ziyadatu is the fa'il. Tajuz is the fi'il. And then qa'ada fi thaniyati miqdara tashahudi. Mudaf, mudafilay. An fardihi wa kanat al-ukhrayani. Rayan is the ism of Kanat. Nafilatan is the khabar. Wa in lam yaqud fi thaniyati jar majroor. Okay, and then you've got batalat salatuhu. It's fi'al fa'il. Man kharaja musafir in zahal. Salla raka'ataini. Raka'ataini is maful bihi. Ila faraq al-buyut al-misr. You guys should know that one. Right, so let's look at the masla now. So here, what we're going to be looking at is three... Masalas really. Well, it's two two kind of masalas, but three. The first is okay. A musafir, when does a person become a musafir? So a musafir, the only really real rulings that really apply to a musafir are to do with prayer and to do with fasting. Right? So it's prayer and fasting. Uh, and the only thing that he's gonna mention over here is about the the prayer one. So let's say there's a guy, lives in Birmingham, not gonna say what his name is, could be me, could be someone else. And this guy wants to decide to travel. Now he can travel as far as he wants, as long as it's not COVID, lockdown. So let's say he travels outside of a city one mile, some might travel two miles, might travel ten miles. How far does a person have to go to be considered legally, according to Islam, according to Sharia, to be considered to be a musafir? That's the thing that we want to kind of figure out. So the rule basically called in the Hanafis is you have to travel a distance of, or intend to travel a distance of, uh, three days and three nights journey. Right, so 
three days and three nights now three days three nights which equals 72 hours right so does that mean that the person has to actually continuously travel for 72 hours right now if you went to google 72 hour journey is like oof. i mean how 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 long is that it's probably you're looking at 300 miles there i, I don't know google it put someone in the comments so no it doesn't work like that the way it works is like this so what you do basically the arabs they used to travel from sunrise to zawal right so from sunrise to zawal when they used to go on a journey they used to travel and then after zawal zohar time they used to stop have a break and then they used to travel the next day and then they used to travel the next day right so that's what it means by three days and three nights meaning that it has to be a journey where you're on like a continuous journey whether you're you're settled in a place or you're moving but it has to be the, the the duration of three nights three days and three nights right so sunrise so that's the kind of thing that you look at now that can be varying in the times of years one well, depending on what time sunrise is and so forth so i mean in the uk it kind of shifts so in winter it's like about four hours uh between sunrise and zawal and in summer it can be over eight hours right so eight hours so four times four times three is twelve and then like, uh, yeah, and then if it's eight, then eight times three is eight, 16, 24. Okay. Uh, so, so now where do we get this? Like, where do we get this 48 hours from? That's the thing, isn't it? Interesting. Like, what, where do we get 48 hours from? Because it's not mentioned in the Hanafi early works. So, as safaru so the journey, alladhi, which yataghayyar, changes with it, al ahkam the rulings, rulings of fasting and rulings of prayer, huwa is... That a person intends modian a location bainahu between him, i.e. Birmingham, wa bain al maqsid and between the the the, the location, meaning the place that he's intended, masiratu, uh, uh, which is at the distance of three days, three days, bisayd al ibli wa mashi al according to the speed that a camel walks at, bisayd al ibl with the according to the sayd the movement of an ibil, a camel, and mashil aqdam, and the movements of human feet. So, um, let's have a look at this. How fast do, do do humans walk? Right. So you can Google this. Just Google it. Say how fast do humans walk? Average speed is about three miles per hour. Let's say, and camels roughly about the same as well. So it's my nice image of a camel. So let me know in the comments as well if you guys like this image. Uh, and by the way, guys, if you, anyone, any of you guys want to support my channel, right, because it really helps me a lot. Uh, then you can check out the details below. You can support my channel through PayPal. You can support my channel through Patreon, which is basically you become a monthly uh, sponsor of this channel, Patreon of this channel. And it helps me a lot in making videos, and I really appreciate it. So, Jazakallah Khair, check that out. Uh, and the current patrons, you guys are amazing people. May Allah bless you and all the patrons who have helped my channel from the beginning. You know, thumbs up to you guys, man. You guys, Wallahi, you guys, uh, you guys know how to make a man feel good. <laughs> so, thank you very much, guys. Uh, right, so uh, three miles per hour. Okay, we worked it out to about three miles per hour. So, you know, if you do the calculation like this, so uh, let's say, for example, like it's an average sort of like distance between the sun, sunrise, and Zawa, six hours, let's say, six times three, right? So, three days, six from the first day, six on the second day, six on the third day. That's how much is that? Six, 12, uh, 18, and then 18 multiply that by the speed that you're walking at, right? So, that's going to be 18 times three. How much is that? Come on. Uh, 18 times 2. Not good at maths. 34 and then 34 plus uh, 34 plus uh, 18, which is about uh, 44. 44 plus 8, about uh, 50. Is it 51? 52? Okay. All right. So 50, 52 miles. That's if it's 6 hour. And if it's less, then it's going to decrease. And if it's more, it's going to increase. Right? So that's kind of what we're looking at. You look at, so in the winter, if it's four hours, then it's four. And then four, four, three days, four, four, four. And then you have um, times by three. So four, 12, four, eight, 12, 12 times three, 36. Yeah. Which is 36 hours then. 36 hour distance journey. And then if you do eight hours, so you see how it shifts. So later Hanafis have used this number of 48 to be the kind of, the kind of thing over here. 
yeah, 48 miles. So that's why you hear a lot of this kind of suffer people traveling with a duration of 48 miles. Well, that's what we're talking about over here, right? So, so, so that's originally that's how they they sort of like classed it, right? But then later on, they gave a figure just to make it easier for people. 48 miles. Now he says, now what if a person's traveling by sea? Now, if you're traveling by sea, what happens? Then obviously it all depends upon the wind blowing the ship. In the olden days, they didn't have engines. Nowadays they have engines, but it was all about the wind blowing the ship. So the ship might be traveling fast, might be traveling slow. So because the, the speed isn't consistent, they said you don't consider like sea travel. Yeah. So you don't look at this, the, the sea travel in this. Uh, okay. المسافر, so okay, let me just draw this for you guys. All right, this is a sea, this is a boat. So you don't kind of like work out the distance by sea travel because that could vary because of the nature of how unpredictable it could be. Right, or المسافر, the next masla. Fardul Musafir, the second ruling is is that uh, what happens in Salat, what is the main change that occurs in Salat? So the ahkam, the rulings, like I mentioned, is two in prayer and in fasting. So in prayer, we have five times Salat in the day, right? So you have Fajr, you have Dhuhr, you have Asr, and you have Maghrib, and Isha. So in Fajr, you pray two Sunnahs, and you pray two Fard. Um, and then in Dhuhr, you pray four Sunnahs, and then four Fard, and then two Sunnahs. And then Asr, you pray four Fard, Maghrib, three, and two, Isha, four, two, and three, Witr. So when we say there, there is a change in the Salat, all we're talking about is the four Fard. And there's three of them. Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha. These three are reduced down to two. So you only pray two. And in fact, you should only pray two. Do not pray four. Yeah, and that's what's going to come next. So he says, Fardul Musafir, the obligation of Musafir in the according to us, if he kulli Salat in every Salat, which is a four unit Salat, is praying to pray two rakats. وَلَا تَجُوزُ لَهُ زِيَادَ عَلَيْهِمَا And it's not permissible excess upon that. To do excess upon, upon two? No. You shouldn't do it. Because that's how, you know, it was it was taught. Uh, right, what if a person was to actually pray, was to pray for, let's say, they they, they just prayed for the or for Asr, or for Isha. Then what? Would that Salat be done? So there's two scenarios for this, right? So let me just draw out these, these two scenarios. Uh, the first is, is that, uh, let's say for example, a person prays the four and he sits after the first two. So imagine this person over here, he's going to pray four. So he's prayed the first rakat, he's prayed the second rakat, third rakat, fourth rakat. Has he sat after rakat number two? Has he done that sitting over there? So if he has sat after rakat number two, then the salat is fine, right? The first two rakats will be counted as fard and the second two will be counted as nafal. I just called them in blue there. These two will be counted as nafal, right? Because he sat and we say the last sitting in every fard is considered to be fard. It's necessary. So because two rakats are fard, the last sitting is after the first two rakats. And if you miss that, right, what's going to happen? The salat will become nullified. So he says, for in salah arba'an, if a person prays for waqad qa'ada, Whilst he has sat في الثانية in the second rakat مقدار التشهد for the duration of the shahud أجزأته الركعتان the two rakats would suffice him عن فرده of his fard وكانت الأخريان and the other two الأخريان له for him will be نفل okay right what if he doesn't sit for these what if he doesn't sit for these then so if he doesn't sit for these then his salat will be nullified in lam yaqud, if he does not sit fi thaniyati in the second rakat, miqdara tashahud, for the duration of tashahud, fi rakaataini in the two rakats, yeah, meaning after the first two rakats, al ulayaini, first two, batalat salatuhu, his salat will become nullified. Simple as that. Right, so that's why the Hanafis say you're not supposed to pray for, because if you miss that first sitting, right, your salat is done, you have to repeat your salat all over again. No one wants that. Now put in the comments if this has ever happened to you. Did you know that you're, according to Hanafis, you're only supposed to pray two in the fard? Now, in all the other salats, you pray the normal amount. Like, if you pray the sunnahs, you pray four before the hur. It's just the fard that is reduced. All right, final, last masala. Woman kharaja musafiran salla When a person leaves their home, 
as a musafir, they start to pray the two rakats, meaning they take the dispensation of two rakats, إِذَا فَارَقَ بُيُوتُ المصر, As soon as they separate, leave the, 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 the houses in the suburbs, the, the outer limits of the houses. So houses, like in them days, they used to have the last houses in the city were like the end of the city and that's it. Then you get like wilderness and deserts and farms and things like that. So in other words, let me just draw it for you here. So over here, what he's basically saying is, you, you don't start your suffer whilst you're in your city. So let's say I've intended from my house to go on a journey to London. I'm not going to start being a musafir from when I leave my house. I'm going to start when I leave the limits of the city. Okay, that's what he's basically saying. Right, so that's the limits of the city. After this, the limits of the city, he can start praying two rakats of dhuhrna. But before this, if he hasn't left, no. That's what he's saying. Now, what are the limits of the city in today's times, you're probably asking. That is something which needs to be discussed by scholars. And that's something which I usually discuss in more advanced Hanafi books. Uh, there you have it, basically. So that's what he's saying, that this is how you pray. Uh, uh, there you go. So these are the three masala that we covered today. Hope you guys benefit from these. If you have any sort of questions or anything to do with this, please let me know. Put it in the comments below. And also, thank you very much, my patrons, for all your support. Really appreciate all the kind work that you guys do, do to be able to help me with my projects, with my, you know, with the work that I love a lot. Um, and yeah, and Sadaqa Jari for all you guys. Take care, inshallah. Remember your du'as. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button, and share it with you, all your contacts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair, guys, for all of your support. Without your support, I wouldn't have been able to produce the videos that I've put up on my YouTube channel. And there is so much more that I really want to do. And without the support of you guys who are patrons, generously supporting this channel, I've been able to get myself a camera, which as you guys can see, the quality of this camera, a mic system, software, I've been able to hire an editor. So what do I want to do? I want to make lots and lots and lots of more videos for beginners, for intermediate, advanced in the subjects like Arabic and Fiqh and Hadith and Tafsir and Aqidah and all those other things as well. And for this to happen, again, this channel needs support. So if you guys want to become patrons and support this channel, then check out the link below. Also, if you do become patrons, you'll have access to videos that I don't put up on my normal YouTube channel. So check that out, inshallah. And there's most other perks as well that you guys can uh, benefit from. And if you want to um, access uh, this channel through social media, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram, Facebook page and other things as well that you can visit. So Jazakumullah khair again guys. Thank you very much for your support. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.